And good evening, uh, humble audience members. Uh, and thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy, busy days uh, to join us for session zero of Out of the Abyss. Woohoo! That's right, that's right. Yep, I know, it's very exciting, but finally we're here. Uh, finally, we're here, and I feel like I've been working towards this for years. I don't know if anyone else feels that way. Um, how long was, how long ago was it when I uh, I started looking for players for this campaign? Uh, Six weeks? 10, yeah, 13 years about. ago, something like that? <laughs> yeah, definitely. 100%. When no, I was 10, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's how it feels. <laughs> so it feels for me, at least, anyway. And, uh, and even after all this time, um, I feel like I haven't done any prep at all. And I'm completely unprepared uh, for what's about to happen. But, you know, that's the nature of, uh, of D&D and, and tabletop role-playing games, guys. Um, you just don't know what you're getting into and you can spend your whole life preparing. Uh, and then you, you, your players will be throwing curveballs at you. At session zero! Not even going to wait till the campaign starts. Already throwing curveballs at me. <laughs> why, uh, why would we do that? Furiously typing away just before we went live, trying to find uh, different classes and races and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> so if my face looks unbelievably red at the moment, uh, it's, it's all right. I'm not having a stroke or a heart attack. Uh, I'm just incredibly <laughs> stressed, uh, so I wouldn't worry about it. Um, yeah, so without further ado, uh, I just want to take a moment and introduce the absolute loveliest uh, bunch of psychopaths who have decided to join me uh, on this uh, epic quest, on this epic adventure. Unfortunately, uh, we couldn't be joined tonight by our uh, uh, our co-DM, uh, Hadrian, who's going to be uh, he's going to be sidelining with me and, and voicing a lot of the characters uh, because unfortunately he's down in southeast Queensland and they've been experiencing uh, some. Some horrible, horrible Ooh, weather. Mate, uh, hectic down there, eh? Us here, I mean, yeah, we're, we're so burning sad. alive. We're burning alive, and, and <laughs> they're, uh, they've got ducks swimming through their living rooms at the moment. Yeah. Uh, so they've got no power. No, right. uh, they have very little uh, phone connection, so unfortunately, you couldn't join us. But that's okay. I mean, who needs a co DM for a session zero anyway? You know, <laughs> that just leaves more screen time for the rest of us, uh, lovely people. Yeah. Um, so without uh, any further uh, stalling on my behalf, let's uh, let's introduce some players, shall we? Yes, yeah, it's a, a crescendo from everyone uh, um. involved. <laughs> That's more Rousing. like it. That's more like it. I'm sorry, I was at a heavy metal concert uh, last night. Yeah, I'm yeah. still hyped. Uh. Um, <laughs> All right, so without further ado, I would like to introduce uh, to all of my viewers, whether you're joining us live or whether you're watching this back on YouTube or listening uh, on Spotify, if you prefer just uh, having the audio medium, if you don't want to see uh, my lovely bearded face, um, I would like to introduce to you the uh, the plucky Toby. How are you, Toby? Good morning, how are you? Oh, yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Stress free. Doing my favorite thing in the world. Yeah, just about reading yourself up for a heart attack and all the amazing, totally legal stuff we're going to throw at you. Yeah, totally legal stuff. <laughs> I, uh, I, I did say to you guys, only official campaign material, right? Did I, did I say that? Oh, I don't remember. I thought we all could all start I with like 18 as our stat scores. So. Mm. <laughs> and two feet. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, uh, I don't think that's going to hold up in a court of law, guys. Um, so One yeah, you were, you were, you're looking forward to this campaign, Toby? I am. I am. I get to hopefully live a little bit longer in this one, but um, then again, we're starting level one, so we'll see how we go. Uh, for those who have not joined us for some reason uh, for our previous streams of uh, Among Shadows and Stone, of which part one and part two are currently available on YouTube and Spotify as well, uh, Toby uh, was the alter ego of uh, the, uh, what, should I say heroic? Yeah, I think he's earned it. The heroic Ronin, yeah. uh, not great out of combat, but uh, but when combat kicked off, I mean, he was the man yeah. you wanted at your side, but uh, probably not anymore because he's going to be smelly pretty soon. Look, the less said the better, but he's in a better place. <laughs> no, I think hey, the more said the better. I watched that. That was um, that was quite a moment, I've got to say. <laughs> uh, I yeah, well, I did try and save you. Yeah, so. well, 
I, I actively encourage no uh, sympathy. heroic sacrifices uh, of, of any kind of nature. Not only is it fun for me as a DM, it's also fun for the viewers. Um, except if you get one every single uh, you know episode, then it starts to wear off a little bit. Um, so yeah, let's move on to my next favorite person. Uh, we have the tolerant Grace. How are you, Grace? Tolerant? <laughs> oh, oh, I thought well, you, you meant I w like you were tolerating me, and no, I was no, no. like, hang on. You tolerate the rest hang of us. Hang on. <laughs> I do. I'm the most normal person here, let's be quite honest. Yeah, the kitty cat ears uh, gave that away. I am great. <laughs> yeah. But they were pink. I sort of just black out when I see pink shiny things. So I was like, give me. Um, but yeah, I'm good. Very excited um, to not be playing a squishy character anymore. Uh -huh. Yes. Super keen. Uh, because of course, uh, as before, uh, Grace uh, joined us as well for Among Shadows and Stone. If you haven't watched that already, you know, jump on YouTube, like, just like I said before. And Grace played a very interesting character. Tell us about your character in Among Shadows and Stone. So I played Thistle, the shepherd druid friend um, who was scared of the dark and um, thus moved a moonbeam onto herself, um, incinerating herself, um, killing herself, and then resurrecting herself by fault of the DM. Um, <laughs> Fault. Sorry. I saw that. I saw that. I would call that grace of the DM. Thank you very much. Oh, very nice. I haven't heard that one before. <laughs> yeah, I think I was being uh, I was being benevolent in in that particular uh, in that particular yes. instance. And and don't get used to that because that's uh, that's out of character for me. No, fair enough. Honestly, I was very surprised when you said yes. To be I, honest, I was surprised myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah what's done is done yeah, and it was a, it was a fantastic moment and you actually got inspiration for for nuking yourself from moonbeam so there you have it guys the uh, the precedent has been set nuke yourself with a spell and you will get inspiration a hundred percent i should have taken a, a, a sorcerer with wild magic uh, I don't know if, if it's part if it's part of your character, then uh, I don't know if I can give you inspiration for that. Um, I do love uh, I do love wild magic sorcerers though. They so I, fun. I, they don't get enough uh, credit. I don't think. Like I had a I had a wild magic sorcerer for one of my campaigns, and uh, like in the middle of combat, tried to cast a spell, had to roll on the wild magic table, and. A uh, unicorn appeared right in the middle of the combat, and then I had to start thinking, like, what the hell is this unicorn going to do? Um, yeah. Makes some really interesting <laughs> moments. Love, uh, love wild magic. I might just yeah. uh, start throw wild magic tables in just for fun. Um, I, I was I was watching a show um, <laughs> that has uh, wild magic sorcerer in it, and they dropped a fireball on the party right at the start of a boss fight. Yep, fireballs always fun. Always a, a good way to get the uh, <laughs> get the combat started. And oh yeah. Yourself in the fireball. I, just no. so you know, if you hit everyone with an area of effect spell, you're not all getting inspiration. <laughs> I'm good. I'm Damn, not Damn it. it. <laughs> Damn. Um, next up, we have uh, we have a couple of players uh, who are brand new to the show. Um, they haven't been part of any of my previous streams, uh, but hopefully they're going to be uh, a mainstay here at Crypto Miss, uh, and you're going to get to know them uh, a lot better. First up, we have the boisterous uh, Remy. G'day, guys. <laughs> How's it going, Thanks man? Having me. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Excited to be here. Um, I'm just happy to be, play, be playing a PC again for once, so being a forever DM, I'm, I get to roll some dice and tell us tell a character story instead of trying to weave magic together and and you know guide people through chaos pretty much <laughs> yeah to, trying to take all the, the the bits and pieces of the puzzle that you get given from uh from the from the characters and they're all like bits of different puzzles so one of them is like a two-year-old puzzle with a piece like this big and you got to fit it with this tiny little piece that someone else gave you and try and put it together yeah it's impossible but yeah. it must be nice to finally sit down in the uh in the player's chair yeah, it is good. It's stressful, nervous. After all, stats, so very nervous. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, no. I think we all are. 
Keep an eye out for that uh, coming up soon, guys. When we start talking about uh, characters, we're going to be rolling stats live on air. And I have a fun little uh, fun little gambling system set up. Um, of course, I, I don't encourage gambling of any sort, except when it comes to uh, D&D Beyond. Uh, then gamble <laughs> away, my friends. Um, so, yeah, uh, what... Uh, you said you're a DM. What uh, campaigns have you DM? Do you run homebrew? Or do you run? Uh, no, I've. Uh, so yeah, Toby. Toby's in my grand architect, which was like spinning a couple of stories modules together. Uh, so we played uh, Waterdeep, the Dragon Heist, to start with. And then we rolled into Storm King's Thunder, and then we rolled into. Uh, Tomb of Annihilation, and then we rolled into finally Descent into Avernus. Um, so it's been a bit of a grand campaign, uh, which is coming to an end very shortly. The all the last puzzle pieces are forming into place, and it's looking like it's going to be an epic, uh, epic conclusion to I think five years. I think by the time we finish. So what um, level are you now? Level impressive. thirty-five, something like that. No, I think they're fifteen or sixteen. Fifteen yeah, or something. Fifteen. Oh, yeah. Wow, and I thought I was a harsh DM. You've done all those campaigns, <laughs> and they're only level fifteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, and then I've got my next one sorted as well. So after we do that, we'll be running into a pirate themed campaign. Um, Speaking of which, so. uh, I, I'm still up in the air about whether or not I can I can join you guys. I would really like to. Uh, I'm just looking at my schedule and, and and what it'll look like. And you know, don't tell anyone this, but uh, I've. Just have to see if I can get my girlfriend to actually uh, green light that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, no pressure. But yeah, it's always when I see another fellow always DM her. It's always nice to throw a throw something out so they can get behind the dice for once and, and have some fun. So. Yeah, I get the I get the occasional one shot in over at the uh, over at the Oasis with uh, with George and and the folks over there. So I get to play sometimes. But it would be nice to be part of like something a little bit more you know a little bit more grand where I can take a character from. Uh, from level one up to level five and then die. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so uh, last but not least. Watch out, guys. I think that's the hint. We've got to start watching out when we get to level it's five. It's going to be Toby. He's killing us off. <laughs> it's going to be Toby. He always dies. Every character he rolls always dies. Just always. Oh, yeah. I have noticed he has a Unfair. tendency to, to roll uh, extremes. He's either rolling ones or rolling 20s and 19s. <laughs> Is that, uh, yeah, is that yeah. true for your no, campaign as well? or? Yeah, there's no middle ground. It's either he's critting and doing ridiculous damage or he's spending an action just running away from a dragon because he missed all his shots. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no, there's no middle ground. Oh, I'm, no. Looking, I'm looking so, forward to see uh, which side of the scales we tip towards when we're doing uh, rolling up some stats. Are we have gone up yeah, these dice rolls. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that'll be exciting. Um, and last, uh, but definitely not least, uh, we have uh, another new face here with uh, with Crit and Miss. We have the enthusiastic Mark. Hey. How are you doing, man? Yeah, good, man. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Thank you. <laughs> thanks for uh, thanks for joining uh, joining me for this uh, this experiment, this test uh, of my nerves. As, as you <laughs> Hey, man, I'm a bit nervous too. I've never been on this like streamy thing before, but I'm kind of used to being in front of people. I play music normally, but um, it's been a bit quiet lately with the COVIDs. And I haven't played D&D in a very long time. Um, I used to play in high school, so the last time I actually played, it was third edition. Okay. Um, so, wow. you know, but I've watched a lot of, of 5e on, like, you know, Critical Role and uh, People at Dirt League and other, you know, YouTube stuff and a bit of you guys now. Um, so, yeah, when the opportunity came up, I was like, you know what, I think... I might just have to give this a go. <laughs> uh, you really, uh, you really lowered your expectations there towards the end. You're like Critical Role, Viva the Dirt League, and then you guys. Uh... Oh. <laughs> I, you got you guys just just came across like were the most recent ones to come across my my feed. You know, like I saw your post about looking for theme music, which was in a what a local musicians group, which is what I normally see stuff from. Um, I didn't even know you existed before that, and I was like, "Oh, hey, um, me and my mates are still working on some songs for you too, sweet, sweet. Um, for us to play around with." And um, yeah, but then when I saw the um, thing to come up to play, I was just like, "Well, I've been wanting to play. I've sort of I used to DM a bit, and I've been working on campaigns, but I don't really have any players, and I haven't gotten to play in a long time." So 
Well, yeah, you're more than welcome, uh, and we're we're glad to have you here. Uh, at Thank you. Um, why don't you take a second uh, while while we're moving on to the next thing? Um, grab uh, grab some links for your uh, your socials, your Instagram or whatever it is, and uh, chuck it up in the chat there for people to see. Um, if anyone joins I us live, they can check it out, and they can uh, they can you know Sweet. check out what you do. Are you, you know uh, what? Speaking of which, are you streaming tomorrow night? Is that something that you're going to be doing um, soon? That's the plan, yeah. I'm going to probably about midnight I'll kick off because I've got to time it with schedules of people that I live with. Um, so I've got to wait for one to go to work and not be around so I can be loud. But um, let me just find this here. I've got a something somewhere. There we go. How's that? So there we go. That's got me. That's a picture of my character dude there. I've got a dice cam and there's my social links just on the little thing. Do you think that'll be readable? Um, it's No, they're very small and very blurry. Small and the wrong way around. Yeah. Um, no, just, oh, yeah. they're doing that. Okay. Chuck yeah, I'll up. just pop them up there when I get a sec. Chuck it up in the chat. And uh, guys, uh, if you happen to miss it or you're listening to this on Spotify and you can't see it, just head over to our Facebook page uh, and I'll be sharing that every now and then. You know, can't miss it. Um, so, yeah. And while you're there, you may as well give us a follow so you stay up to date with uh, with everything that's going to be happening here in Crit and Miss. Because uh, even though this campaign is going to be our flagship campaign uh, for the foreseeable future, I do have lots of uh, other exciting things planned. Um, whether or not you know they come to fruition, uh, I guess kind of depends on uh, on the reaction I get uh, or if I get any reaction at all from the audience. Uh, so if you have a moment, guys, um, you know, like us on Facebook and like us on, uh, you know, on the, here on Twitch. Uh, check us out on YouTube. Uh, and I also have a Ko-Fi account. I'm going to chuck that one up in the chat for people to see. Um, if you like uh, what we do, and I've unfortunately... Sorry, give me one second while I bring that back up. If you like what we do here at Crit and Miss, if you enjoy our content, uh, head over to Ko-Fi. Give us a you know a three dollar uh, donation. Every little bit helps um, because the first thing that I would like to do uh, with the donations that I do or do not get is I would like to commission uh, some artwork for my uh, lovely players and their even lovelier characters that they've come up with that we're about to meet. Um, so yeah, just a, a three dollar. I mean, you know, less than your average cup of coffee. So so head over there uh, for those people listening at Spotify. Uh, just check out um, just www.kofi.com slash crit underscore n underscore miss, uh, and you can't miss it. Uh, so without further ado, uh, I'll let you guys. Uh, know what we're doing tonight. This is going to be your average uh, session zero for those who, who are familiar with uh, with D&D or, or tabletop role playing games. Um, the session zeros are basically where all the players get together, um, they'll all roll up stats for their characters. Now uh, the players uh, here have already rolled, uh, or I should say have already created their characters, so they've chosen their races and their classes and all that kind of stuff. Um, but we haven't yet uh, settled on the uh, the player's stats or the character's stats just yet. Because we're going to be doing something uh, a little bit interesting. I touched on this uh, earlier. Um, I am going to be getting uh, the players to be rolling the stats for their characters uh, live on air. And we're going to have a, a little bit of a, a system going that will hopefully keep things fair. Uh, but also give an opportunity uh, for the players to, to make decisions. And if they roll poorly, it's entirely uh, up to them. It's their fault. It's not my fault. Because uh, I like to palm off uh, responsibility to other people. It's what I do. And it's why I like to have a co-DM for all of my games. Um, so basically, uh, what I usually do, I just, for like one-shots and stuff like that, I just give people the option to use standard array. It just keeps things simple, uh, easy to use, Fair, everyone has the same thing and I don't have to have uh, an extra headache um, so standard array uh, basically you get a set of numbers and they are 15 14 13 12 10 and 8 and you're free to apply those uh, to each of your character stats uh, as you see fit um, but there is also another system that you can use uh, for coming up with those numbers uh, and that is called uh, just rolling uh, is, that, is that what it's called? Rolling for stats? Just point, yeah, rolling points. Um, yeah. And uh, basically how that works is, generally speaking, you'll roll four um, six-sided dice. 
uh, you'll take the lowest number, you'll get rid of that, and whatever the uh, the sum of the other three dice is uh, is, is totals is uh, is what you ha then have to attribute to your player's stats, be it strength or dexterity or all that other kind of nerdy stuff. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the players uh, the option. They're going to roll a set of stats. And if they don't like them, well, they can still choose to use the standard array. Or they can gamble. And this is when things start to get fun. Um, you can choose to try and roll a second time to see if you can get stats higher than the standard array. Um, and if you do, great. You can, you can take those and you can use those. And if you don't, well, you can still choose to have the standard array, but that was just a little bit too nice for me. Uh, I, I couldn't just leave it at that. So if you do choose to roll the, the stats again and you don't like the stats and you're going to choose to use the standard array, um, then it's going to be standard array minus two points. And you can subtract those two points from any one of those, uh, any one of those numbers that you want but then you have to attribute that to your character. So it's going to be a little and bit of a gambling system here, guys. Can you split them up? Can I take like one from one stat and one from another? Yes, you can absolutely do that. Yes, I will allow All right, it. so if that happens, I can basically just take off my racial mods that I get to choose. Yep. That yeah, and, and take a standard array with the plus two charisma that you get, because I get like a plus two charisma, and then I get to choose two separate plus ones. So. Yep, that's uh, that's pretty much how it's going to roll out. So it's it's going right. to be a little bit of gambling, but there's going to be a safety net, because like I said, this is going to be a long campaign, and I don't want people playing characters that are incredibly underpowered. If you rolled all ones uh, and you had to take those stats, it, it wouldn't be fun for anyone except for the viewers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so without further ado... Um, how about we, uh, we dive straight into it. We start talking about some characters. Oh God, no. <laughs> oh, no, no? Yeah. so we just end the stream then? So we right. just end the stream. Yeah. I'm too nervous to roll guys. stats. So we'll just kind of <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining Thanks us, for guys. <laughs> I hope you had a great time. Are we ending the stream? No, uh, we're going to keep going. I don't care what you think, Toby. We're, we're, we're yeah. barreling on with this, whether you like it or not, buddy. Oh, I'm nervous. Yep, right, let's do it. You're nervous. Imagine how I feel. I've got uh, four people I have to uh, I have to sort of, you know, keep entertained and uh, wrangle. Wrangle. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> See, that's why uh, I keep you around, Grace. That and Moonbeam. Um, yeah. All righty then. Of course. Where, where shall else? we start? Where shall we start? Um, I, I did tell you guys that there was going to be an order uh, that I was going to do this in. Uh, no, actually, we need to stick to that order because that's how I have all of the. Uh, all of the stuff prepared. So we're going to start tonight with uh, with Grace. Um, and uh, Grace, why don't we start uh, with your character's name? I believe it's already up on the screen there for everyone to see. Uh, that's the that's the character art there. Who? What's what's her name? Her name is Thrash the Troublesome, and she is a barbarian. Yay! Mm. <laughs> Um, yeah. Yeah. If you can, if you can see that artwork up there, we've we've basically got like a, a humanoid, uh, a humanoid cat uh, with a a large two-handed axe uh, just casually resting on her shoulder. Um, and you said, oh, did you say what your race was? No. There we go. Talk about uh, what what race? Yeah, did she's you a tabaxi. Sorry. You're right. Tabaxi. Um, which was really interesting. I was actually just sort of scrolling through Pinterest. And I found this photo and I nearly fell off my chair because I had no idea what to do for this campaign. And then I found this photo. I'm like, oh my God, this photo was not my idea. It's, uh, it's Providence. Um, it was yeah. meant to be. So that's it. Uh, I'll see if exactly. I, can, uh, I can bring that up a little bit bigger for you guys to see. Uh, uh, so, so yeah, we're, we're looking, looking at a, 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 a tabaxi, tabaxi, wandering outcast, barterers of law, fleeting fancies. Um, Hailing from strange and distant land, wandering tabaxi are cat-like humanoids driven by curiosity to collect interesting artifacts, gather tales and stories and lay eyes on all the world's wonders. Um, ultimate travellers, the inquisitive tabaxi, rarely stay in one place for long. Their innate nature pushes them to view, uh, oh, pushes them to leave no secrets uncovered. Uh, no treasures or legends lost. Is that, uh... Is that, that vibe, vibe with, with, the, uh, with the, the idea, idea that you had for Thrash the Troublesome? Grace? Look, I am going to preface that that's just a little bit different. Um, 
uh, her family did settle down, um, but I guess it didn't really end well. Um, <laughs> her family was actually murdered mm -hmm. um, at, while she was still really, really young um, by a band of mercenaries. Um, and then Thrash was sort of just thrown out onto the street um, because the town sort of blamed it on her um because i guess you know not seeing a lot of tabaxi they'd be like she's the problem um and then she was taken in by the blood axes and um basically is a axe for hire uh because it wouldn't be uh, a game of DD without a murdered family somewhere right am i right <laughs> definitely <laughs> no i love it that, that's uh it's it's vague enough that it gives me uh some interesting things uh to work with and spoiler alert i've already figured out a way to uh to introduce a little bit of your backstory into the campaign i think it's going to be I think it's going to be fun um as long as you don't mind yeah, me taking a little bit so of creative exciting. liberty um yeah uh and of course not at all i always like to leave parts of my characters ambiguous so that the dm has a little bit to work with awesome love it uh that's my favorite kind of character someone uh like a blank slate something i can do something completely wild and unpredictable with um so every uh every race uh comes with its own set of uh traits and abilities and that kind of stuff i have here on the screen the tabaxi traits they get uh, a deck score increased by two and a charisma score increased by one that's actually uh, that's actually interesting. I wonder where the charisma thing comes from. I don't see cats as being naturally charismatic. More cats are cute as do. Oh, I've got three. I've got I'm a cat a, right I'm, here. I'm a dog person, but even I'll say cats are, are pretty adorable. Look at this guy. Here's Thrash the Tiger. Oh, hello. So cute. <laughs> it actually, kind of looks like Thrash the Tiger. <laughs> it does. <laughs> oh, and that is the most stubborn cat I've ever met in my entire life. Uh, I kid you not. If he's lying on the bed and you're making the bed, uh, you can be like flicking the sheets around. He will not. He will not move. You put the sheet on top of him. He'll be there an hour later. You just see a lump <laughs> underneath the sheet. Um, so I, I imagine you're going to be adopting the adopting those character traits as well. Uh, entirely stubborn. Uh, yes, I will be. Um, I don't plan on making her very charismatic, though. She is a very cool, cold, calculated sort of person. Uh, well, tabaxi, I guess. Um, and she's really not fond of other people. Um, she's basically here on a job and then sort of, I guess, diverged. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Um, just brushing over other things. Tabaxi lifespans equivalent to humans, the same size as a human. Uh, walking speed is 30 feet, same as a human. Uh, but you do have dark vision. Uh, you have the keen cat senses, uh, as it's written here. Uh, you can see in dim light uh, within 60 feet. Um, you've got feline agility. That's one that I, I, I particularly hate. Um, so basically, um, you can use your reflexes and agility to move with a burst of speed. Uh, when you move on your turn in combat, you can double your speed until the end of your next turn. Uh, once you use this trait, you can't use it again uh, until you move zero feet on one of your turns. So basically, uh, guys, you can just double your speed. You can dash for free uh, on, on your turn. And as long as you stand still for the next turn, you can just keep doing it. Like if you're in combat. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, and that'll, that'll and translate. And you have, what, 40 foot movement as a barbarian? Uh, is that correct? No, I think uh, it's She's just got 30 feet. 30 feet. Yeah, just uh, uh, just 30 feet of movement as a, as a tabaxi. It's the race that uh, determines your uh, movement speed. Yeah, so uh, yeah, basically cool. in a turn, uh, you can... And that's going to be really, uh, really useful for a barbarian as well, just to dash straight into combat and get right on the front line and get absolutely mauled. Um, and if you don't want to get mauled, of course, you have uh, your cat's claws with which to fight, uh, which basically... Yeah, I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, and that, that, uh, that actually might come in handy during the campaign. You never know. Uh, maybe your weapons aren't available at some point. Uh, and you can, uh, you can use 1d4 plus strength modifier uh, as your unarmed strike. Um, and you have proficiency in perception and stealth. Um, and you can speak, read, write, common, and one language of your choice. Do you remember what language you chose? Cool, that is a very good question. Um, actually, I think off the top of my head it was um, Gnomish. Gnomish. 
That's an interesting one. Um, yes. It's yeah, a weird um, choice for a tabaxi. Well, I picked it because um, I'm not sure. I think the Blood Axes were actually part of a Critical Role campaign, um, but the Blood Axes were actually formed by dwarves. Sorry, I meant dwarvish, not gnomish. Oh, my God, that's Oh, that's racist. <laughs> that's what that is. All you short people look alike. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um but yeah, um, it was actually founded by um, dwarves and they were basically outcasts and then they expanded the blood actors and now start taking in all sorts of outcasts. Um, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So it's dwarvish, definitely. Um, dwarvish, all I right. Think. So we're going to settle on dwarvish. Okay, dwarvish, uh, a little yes. bit more common. Yeah, that's, I can work with that. Uh, I'll have to look up the blood axes. Are, are we... Uh, is this uh, now part of the uh, Critical Role live action universe? Are we doing that? Is that happening? Is that official? Uh, <laughs> I only stole it because I thought it fit the character. I'm a bit <laughs> like that. So. No, it's all good. Uh, we'll say it's spelt differently. The the the, the blue daxes. The blue, exactly. The blue, uh, like German blutes. Um, uh, we have up the class features for barbarians uh, there on the screen. Let me just zoom in so you can see that a little bit better. Um, what do we get? Um, proficiency with light armor, medium weapons, blah, blah, blah. Lots of, uh, lots of numbers and stuff no one really cares about. But the fun thing that you get as a barbarian uh, is your rage. Uh, so your rage ability. In battle, you fight with primal ferocity. On your turn, you can enter a rage as a bonus action. Uh, you have advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws, uh, so you get a little bit more uh, beefy uh, during the fight. You can pick people up. You can pick up one of those dwarves or, or, or gnomes. You can't tell which one it is and throw them away. Um, and when you make a, well a melee a, a wellay, a melee weapon attack using strength, uh, you get bonus to the damage uh, that increases as you gain level. So I believe that's plus two uh, to begin with. And resistance to bludgeoning, <laughs> piercing, and slashing damage. And that's the thing that I hate about barbarians, that is, is that resistance. so, so powerful. There you go. I, 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 and I actually took... Sorry. Yeah, no, you're right. Go ahead. I actually... Um, there's a feature in the barbarian called unarmed defense. So while you're not wearing armor, your armor class equals plus 10 plus your dexterity meter dexterity modifier plus your constitution modifier so i've actually made the executive decision that thrash does not wear armor um oh dear so uh she has oh i have to triple check but last time i checked her ac was pretty buff pretty good pretty good even so depending on how your naked. stats turn out yeah depending on how the stats mm, turned out on that's gonna be the layout part. it was fine <laughs> Um, all right, what's next? What else did I get? Uh, of course, your background as a mercenary veteran, because your background gives you uh, extra little bits and pieces uh, for your character's stats. For instance, as a mercenary veteran, you have proficiency in athletics and persuasion, um, which I'm sure uh, persuasion is going to come in real handy for the barbarian when you run into a, a situation that you probably shouldn't have uh, dashed straight into. Um, and tool proficiencies. One type of gaming set, vehicles, land. Oh, so you have uh, proficiency with land vehicles. Uh, a yeah. uniform of your company, uh, an insignia of your rank. It's basic, uh, some, some flavor stuff uh, for you to play with as well. So, cool, cool, cool. Love it. Um, so we've already touched on your character's background as well um so basically you know your your, your family was murdered uh and you joined the the life of a of a mercenary um how long has it been uh since that fateful day look she was nine um she was very very young um and she sort of lived on the streets until she was 13 um but the fire I guess it was very like dramatic, traumatic. So of course I have actually added a little bit of spice um, as it were, and she suffers from um, chronic insomnia. So because of that traumatic event, so that I thought would add a, like some really interesting mechanics into her character. Um, Constant so, yeah. exhaustion. 
Uh, yeah, so that's, that's, uh, that's something that I've been, uh, I've been working with, uh, uh, with Grace to come up with, uh, some mechanics, uh, to reflect her, uh, her insomniac, uh, trait. Uh, and we've come up with something that I think works is, is pretty fun. Uh, do you want to let them know? Do you want to keep it a secret? Uh, what do you want to do? Ooh. No, I reckon we let them know. Why not? We let them know? Um, Go for so, it. yeah. So every time she takes a long rest, I have to roll an ice d20 to see um, how restful her night was. Um, if it's anything below a 10, she doesn't sleep restfully. Um, she still gets the benefits of the long rest, which is super, super awesome. Um, but if the next night she does not sleep well again, she does start taking points of exhaustion. Um, but I do get a plus two to my standard my um, standard perception and my, of course, roll perception. Um, so basically, the, the the way I see this happening, like role play wise, is um, yeah. So if you if you if, if you don't have a, a good night's rest, you, you're still going to get all the benefits. Like you're going to get yeah, your hit point back and all that kind of stuff. Because I think it would be unfair if you if you weren't able to just take a long rest. Um, yeah, but you, yeah. you can still take a long rest and still take a point of exhaustion. Now, normally speaking, a point of exhaustion in, uh, in 5th edition means you have uh, disadvantage on uh, all ability checks. Does that sound right, Remy? You're a DM. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, just ability checks, so like um, perception, stealth, that kind of stuff. Um, nothing in uh, combat, so that's that's all right. Yeah, so the, uh, one's pretty good. The way I the way I balance that out um, is she's now she, you become hyper alert. Uh, I don't know if anyone's had insomnia before, uh, but I had a quick look, and, and and some people become hyper alert during their their insomnia, um, you know, situation. Uh, so I've given her a little uh, a little plus two to her uh, her perception checks and her passive uh, passive perception while she is exhausted, uh, just to sort of balance out that uh, that sort of negative uh, trait of her insomnia. So you have a little bit of a you know a bit of give and take uh, to put it uh, yeah. to put it simply. Uh, so that's gonna be fun. Can't wait to see how that works out uh, during the campaign. But you have to, you're gonna have to keep me honest with that because I'm probably gonna forget uh, like I forget everything including people's names. Uh, no problem. <laughs> um, all right, without further ado, shall we move on to the next character? We have, who is this? Oh, are we rolling her stats? Oh, yeah. yes, rolling her stats. Yes, we yeah. should do that. We're going to do that right now. Oh, no, 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 never mind. No, we're not rolling stats. It's fine. <laughs> we're rolling Just, stats uh, Forget live. about now, it. Toby? I... <laughs> I made a promise and it's going to happen live on air. See, nope. originally what I had in mind is we're going to go through everyone's character and then roll. But no, let's let's roll them now um, because I changed that last second. So it's still stuck in my head like I explained to you guys earlier. No, let's let's roll some stats. Um, so to start off with, uh, do you want to roll uh, an array of stats for us, uh, Grace, and let us know what you get? Sure, Tom So yeah, we will start with strength. <laughs> Um, my beefy one. So if this fails, then my whole character sucks. Well, you um, can you can you can roll these, uh, and see. then when when you, when you have the uh, when you have the number, you can choose to apply that yeah. to whichever one you want. So this doesn't necessarily have to be your strength. Uh, obviously, you will want it to be because it's a seventeen. But you just roll yeah. the number, and then you can attribute them wherever you want them. All right. So you go seventeen. I was rolling pretty well earlier, so. It's a good start. It's a good and start. And for the next one, 15. 15. All right. Rolling rocks here. Get these ones out of the I'm way. doing very well. <laughs> okay. 15. All right. Next one. What do we get? 11. An 11. All right. Middling roll. 11. All right. Oh, let's see. 11 or lower for the next two, please. 13. 13. Mm -hmm. Not liking this. I'm lucky. Is it too late? I'm lucky. Is it too late to retract uh, my, uh, my earlier statement and just say standard array? No? Okay. 12. 12. Pretty good. All right. Um, you can get out of 17 this. 17 again. And a 17. Oh, no. All right. All right. I swear I'm not lying. Barbarian. I will send it to the chat if I have to. Uh, watch the rest of us get ones now. <laughs> yeah. This is across sorry. the board. All right. Go, Barbarian, it's all on you. We have, uh, I'll be taking that. Um. We have an array of stats. Now, no, 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 let, me, uh, 
So you, you have the option. You can you can you can keep those stats. You could you could of course take the standard array, but that would be crazy. But you, you could gamble and roll again, mate. Who knows? Maybe you get uh, 18s all around. Do you wanna do you wanna gamble? Or do you wanna? Can I tempt you? Yeah. Nah, Gamble's man. advocate here. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you sure? No, I plan to come in here, roll once, and if it sucked keep standard array i've screenshotted my standard array but this is so much better so obviously i'll be keeping that and um not oh, rolling again man. but thank you for the offer worst thing about being, being a dm is saying something and then uh having to stick to what you said you set the precedent uh, <laughs> all right anyway um i am beholden to my words uh those are your uh, those are your stats feel free to apply them uh anywhere you want with your character we might uh, catch up at the end to see where you put them but uh let's move on uh to the next character um while you do that who is this who are we looking at yeah um we have lady althera Remy. It is me. Me. Yes. me, about this person. Uh, um, she is, uh, so, like, I have got about 50 characters um, that I've got in folders, and she was one of the ones that I've had for a while, uh, and then everyone was kind of picking their classes, you know, we got a cleric, um, a paladin, a barbarian, uh, we didn't have really much range support utility, so I, I love filling in the roles of, of the team, and so I thought, well, time to bring my wizard out, a little cheeky wizard. So this is her. Um, she'll be a bit of fun. Um, just making allies wherever she goes. Yeah, I'm sure. Look at that face. That, that's, uh, <laughs> that's the kind of face you want uh, at your side. Uh, especially with that, is that a scythe that she's holding in her hand there? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we've changed one of her proficiencies from a quarterstaff to a spear. So, and that's like re... Uh, Reflavored to be yep. um, a scythe, but it will, it functions pretty much like a spear. So that's the um, same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So uh, not only can you cast fireballs on on groups of goblins, uh, you can also help harvest wheat uh, when it comes to harvest time. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or souls. Or souls. Or souls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wheat souls. Same thing. Uh, uh, no, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Oh, no, it's, it's never a bad time to whip out a wizard. So uh, this has now become uh, a defunct uh, part of this stream uh, because I thought you were going to be playing a UNT Pure Blood, but that was just uh, turns out a placeholder selection. What are you going yeah. to be playing? I'll be playing a Shadar Kai, which is a uh, a shadow elf, pretty much. So their ancestry comes from the shadow fell, um, and they're very much about. Uh, they are chaotic in nature, but all about protecting freedoms of others uh, and ensuring what happened to their uh, ancestry doesn't happen to them wherever they end up. So um, that's kind of where they stand from. And where I'm going with, with this kind of wizard is kind of, I can, I can pull on that. You know, I'm a bit chaotic, but I do it for the right reasons and to stop things from happening that is, you know, in the grand scheme of things, very bad, so... Yeah, look, uh, I always encourage a little bit of chaos in a character, and it's yeah, like I said, it's never a bad time to whip out a whip out a wizard and start throwing fireballs left, right, and center. Always uh, <laughs> spices things up in a campaign. Um, That's right. So this is now defunct. Let's just skip through that. Blah 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 blah. Here we have uh, a wizard, scholars of the arcane, um, clad in no, oh, you're not clad in silver robes. Get out of here with that. Um, yeah, so so uh, talk a little bit about uh, the wizard class, uh, real quick. Uh, like, what do you get? How does it work? Uh, give us a little bit of a breakdown. Uh, so, wizards are one of those ones where you can kind of mold it to be whatever you really want it to be. If you want it to be a super helpful, um, you know, support the team, you can you know learn spells and find spells to help that. If you want to go full damage, you can. You can do that if you want to summon creatures, things. You can do that. So, I like that they can. You know, you can build them however you like. However, you really you want to play D and D, you can build a wizard to kind of fit that role. 
Um, so depending on what the group needs will be what kind of spells are leaning towards. I know I've got some spells that I re really would like um, to to get, but you know we've got a barbarian, so I'll be definitely chucking uh, you know a haste on 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 her oh, very here, often and shit. watching that chaos just <laughs> unload with those <laughs> extra attacks. As I, was, in AC. <laughs> as I was talking about her ability to, to basically use the dash action for free, I was thinking, God, I hope no one casts haste on her. Yeah, <laughs> a tabaxi oh, going 120 so feet around. I'm just going to be like, go now and uh, watch, you know, <laughs> the roadrunner burst off into the distance. Um, so, yeah, or, you know, uh, putting extra shields on the paladin or, you know, turning the cleric into one of my undead thralls. It's, you know, I'm all for the team. So you've got a, you've got a lot of utility uh, yeah, in not. a wizard, basically. Um, of course, wizards known for their spell casting ability. Um, Wizards get like a wide variety of different spells they can they can uh, they can learn and they can cast. Um, getting those back uh, every long rest, uh, I believe it is. But that's yeah. um, you know only if you have the uh, the correct conditions. Uh, for instance, for a wizard, you need to have access to your spell book, uh, and you also have um, uh, a set of cantrips, which are basically zero level spells which you can cast. As much as you want. Have you have any uh, spells selected already? Any cantrips, for instance? Yeah, yeah. I've got, I've got my whole <laughs> spell books. Like, could you go and they can pick a few to start with? But yeah, I do have um, all of them ready to go. Um, Firebolt as the you know the the starting one. Prestigitation because I'm a classy lady. I need to make sure that I'm clean all the time. Uh, so make sure before as a after every lady encounter. myself, I, uh, I I understand that fully. I'm trying uh, to be impressed with my character. And then uh, I told the dead because it is a necromancy one and I can use that to great effect with the uh, necromancy. So they're my three, um, my three starting cantrips and I'll get more as I go. I've got a few rituals, some language ones to take magic because I am a wizard and then uh, magic missiles, mage armor, shield, witch bolts. And that is it. Ah. That's the secret. All those, uh, all those classic D and D spells, magic missile. I'm sure you're going to get lots of opportunities to cast magic missile on the darkness uh, throughout this campaign. So, <laughs> yeah, yes. Um, sweet as. What else do we have? The spell casting ability, of course. The spell casting ability for a wizard is intelligence. Um, so hopefully you're going to roll uh, a good stat for your intelligence. Hopefully, I've got yes, yes. I'm going to roll good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Talk yourself yes, up, man. Manifest. Just manifest. Confidence. <laughs> uh, uh, that's right. Uh, so you have to have your spell book available for the cast of spells, uh, and you chose the uh, the noble background. You want to talk about uh, Lady Athera's background? Uh, who is she? Where is she from? Uh, so she's from Waterdeep. Um, she is a family there that. Um, is not too old it's only the second generation so her grandfather kind of founded the house in uh waterdeep um and she is one of six children uh, and each one with their own strengths and she found herself to be very more intelligent and less dexterous and less uh strong than her brothers and sisters and decided that study was her, her place to be um and then she just stumbled upon some some books a book in particular uh, one fateful day and her life kind of changed dramatically from the balls and prestigious life that she was wearing into one of delving into mysteries and uncovering more knowledge to become more powerful okay so um knowledge is a is a means to an end for this character it's something to be gathered uh to, to gain more power am i am i gauging that correctly yeah correct you know uh knowledge is power and she that is at the forefront of her mind that she will find it tame it hold it control it and be the one to master her universe and those around her especially in water deep well uh we'll see about that um all right. Um, so as yes, the let's see how you roll. Yeah, let's see. Let's see how we roll. <laughs> Six is across um, the board. <laughs> yeah, I'm currently I'm the leader of the party. I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> I, th I thought you were gonna have a, a low just charisma. Do you, want, do you want the uh, the the cat barbarian to be the leader of the party? Yes. 
It'll be halfway through negotiations and she'll knock the fishbowl off the off the off the table. Just slowly uh, nudge it towards probably. the corner. That only um, upsets Zanadar, right? Um, oh, I mean, it upsets me too when my cards do it. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, I think that brings us to the end uh, of your 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 choices that you made for this character. Now let's uh, let's take the power out of your hands and put it into the hands of fate, shall we? So we uh, roll some stats. No. Uh, yep. Let's. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Let's roll some stats. Let's uh, let's tell us what the results of those are. Seven. Oh, it's a good start. Good start. Oh no. All right. Yeah, keep that up, my friends. You're already my favorite player. Let's keep going. Uh, so, just to, if I roll really bad, I can do one re-roll again. You can so do a no re-roll, uh, but you either have to take those stats that, or you have to go with the standard array minus two. Okay. Uh, five, five, and three, thirteen. Thirteen, okay. Middling roll, yeah, that's a little bit better. Hopefully that's the highest one we get tonight. Five. Five. <laughs> wow. wow. Oh, no. This is more like it. <laughs> no, 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 it's a fine. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It's fine. And this is why we Ten. don't gamble, kids. Ten. All right. Ten. Ten? That's, yeah, that's I'm about. definitely re-rolling, just to let everyone know. <laughs> Uh, another 10. Another 10. All right. I'm starting to feel bad now. This is a trap. No, I'm roll I'll be rolling again for sure. All right. And a 13. A 13. Okay. So now you have the option. You can you can take those stats or you can take the standard array or you can choose to gamble it and roll another I'm re-rolling. Re-rolling. Okay, yeah, you either re have to take yeah. those stats or go with the standard array minus two. Nah, re-rolling. All right. Re let's do it. <sighs> okay. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Don't feel the tension. There's a way to dice out. I'm sweating. Nine. <laughs> That's it's two more. It's two more than last time. All right. Oh. Look. It's just a squishy wizard. How hard are they to kill off? <laughs> oh, all right. What is that? That is a 13. 13. Okay. Oh, so that's not bad. you're still two more than last time. That's, uh, that's a good start. Oh. Ten. Ten. Oh, that's definitely better than a five. Come on. Don't. Come on. Just give me... Seventeen. Seventeen. We're up there. That's a bit better. Seventeen. Now we're talking. You're going to put that way the dice are out of your here, charisma. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, what is that's that? Fourteen. In your strength of fourteen. Pretty good. Last one. Eighteen. Love the no, I'm sorry. Oh, I lied. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I didn't. Love it's another it. 17. It's another 17. Um, it's another 17. All right. Yeah. Uh, so you're going to go with the standard array minus two, right? <laughs> nah, no, that's way better. No, that's the first roll. The first roll. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I, I will make a special exception and allow you to take the first roll if you so wish. Look, that first roll was way too spicy. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly would make things interesting. Uh, Althea, the person who's uh, gathering knowledge for power uh, with a, a maximum of 13 intelligence. Yeah, yeah, she should be very confident with her abilities. Uh, no, that's good. Uh, so you're going to take that second uh, set of stats. Good, good, good. Um, the, uh, the die squads who are on your side tonight... Uh, at the end, because uh, that is definitely better than the standard array. 17, 17, 14, 13, 10, and 9. Not too bad. 9 mm. straight away. So we're, we're, we're happy with that. And um, that pretty much uh, brings us to approximately the halfway point uh, of introducing characters. Uh, so we're just going to take a short break, ladies and gentlemen, um, for five minutes. It's 9.30 now. Um, Come back again at uh, at 9:35. We're gonna we're gonna be rolling some more stats and introducing some more characters. And I'm gonna be uh, talking about a little giveaway that we got planned for Out of the Abyss to celebrate this upcoming campaign with my very good friends. Um, so, yep, five minute break, guys. Do whatever you gotta do. Be back here again at 9:35, and we're gonna get into. Oh, look at that! My brother joined us. How's it going? All right, we'll be back in five minutes, guys. Stick with us. Sweet.
And we're back! Hello, everybody! Hopefully, you, uh, hopefully you stuck with us uh, through that little break. Um, we just had a, a bit of a fire emergency going on in, uh, in, in, in Grace's recording studio there, but hopefully it's sorted. Uh, she whipped out the fire extinguisher and, uh, and, and got that sorted out. Is that right, Grace? Well, I mean, on the bright side, my room now smells like pine tree, um, burning pine tree. Burning pine so. tree. Nothing nicer than a, a burned down pine tree. It brings back memories. Um, of Canada. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we're, we're, we're back, guys. And uh, before we get uh, we, we get stuck back into, uh, into our, what, what should we call it, character introductions, um, I just want to have a quick talk uh, about a little fun thing that we're doing uh, to celebrate this upcoming campaign, Out of the Abyss. Uh, we're going to be doing... Uh, oh, hey, Fizz Cannon. What's up, man? Yeah, we're rolling up characters. Uh, we, we have the characters already made, but we're going to be rolling stats live on air, man. So it's nice of you to join us again. Um, I've decided uh, to celebrate Out of the Abyss. We're going to be doing a little giveaway. Um, I've got a few fun little things uh, lined up, and uh, one of them actually arrived today, so I got the opportunity uh, to show that off to you guys. Uh, so I'm just gonna go and bring that up for you. There he is, this little guy. Isn't he cute? Um, so the guys over at Froth's Minis uh, were nice enough uh, to send through uh, a miniature to us. Um, that's, uh, that's the guy you're seeing right in the middle uh, of the screen there. Uh, for those people listening back on Spotify, uh, you are looking at a, uh, a mini of, uh, what shall we call it, like a, a mutated illithid mind flayer. He's got like a big yeah. an eyeball growing out of his shoulder and a weird like pointed spear arm coming out of his back. Um, yeah, he, look, he looks like an illithid that the Chaos Gods from the Warhammer universe have gotten their hands on. Yeah, and it was... Uh, it was I, I went through when uh, when they first got in touch with me. I, I went through and had a look, and I found this one was uh, thematically uh, appropriate for reasons uh, that you guys are going to find out hopefully on the uh, on the eighteenth uh, and and there on when the when the campaign begins. But I actually have him here. I can show Turner. him off to you guys. Look at that! Isn't that awesome? Oh, look at him! Look at him! Oh, cool! That's, uh, I love that's so it. awesome. You can't really see it uh, on the camera, but there's this like the level of detail in this is is fantastic. You can see the material of his little uh, dress thing he's got going on there. There's a little eyeball growing out of his stomach too, which is uh, a bit gross and a bit cool at the, all at the same time. Um, so yeah, I'm scared. <laughs> uh, we've got a couple of other things that we're going to be uh, giving away as well. Uh, we're going to be giving away a D and D themed uh, glass. Uh, which hasn't arrived yet, but I'll chuck that up on, on Facebook for everyone to check out as well. Uh, and we've also got three copies uh, of, uh, what was it called again? The Central Market uh, by uh, Glenn Watkins to give away. So, two people are going to be winning uh, a copy, a free copy of the Central Market, which is like a, uh, a compendium of uh, shops and stuff that you can add into your D&D &D campaigns. It has a uh, you know the the shopkeepers in in like interesting information about the shopkeepers and little quests tied to each shop which you can uh, which you can throw in there it's really cool so two people are going to be winning that and one person's going to be winning the miniature the cup and also a copy of the central market and all you have to do uh, to get involved in that to go into the draw to to win those things is join us all of the people here plus Adrian uh, on the 18th of March at 8 30 Australian Eastern Standard Time um, and uh, chuck a message in the chat with hashtag out of the abyss and your favorite D&D monster whether it be a weird mutated illithid mind flayer or, uh, or something more interesting I actually got some more minis as well from the from from the object my particular favorite monster in D&D &D, uh, which I spoke to I spoke about in critical conversations uh, last week is uh, a mind flayer, for instance. Ooh. Love those guys, just so chaotic. Um, so yeah, join us for episode one on the 18th. Uh, leave a message in the chat, hashtag uh, out of the abyss with your favorite D&D &D monster and you will go in the running to win those things. 
Um, and we'll be announcing the winner on episode two, which hopefully will be uh, landing on, I believe it's the 1st of April, which is uh, a fortnight later. Does that sound right to you guys? Yep. Uh, yeah. Sweet, awesome. I think so. Um, so <laughs> one, uh, one lucky person yep. is going to be winning all that stuff, and a couple of people are going to get a copy of the Central Market, a free, uh, a free PDF uh, copy of the Central Market. So it's cool. Um, and thanks to all those people involved uh, who got in touch with me when I uh, reached out about running a little giveaway. So you can find uh, Froth's Minis on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, uh, just at, at Froth's Minis. Um, type that in, you'll, you'll find them pretty much everywhere. Um, the glass is coming from uh, Smoldering Designs. Um, chuck that in the chat as well. There's a link there for you guys to follow. Check them out. And we also have uh, a link for the Central Market, uh, which is this one here. Um, so you can check that out as well. Hey, Nathan, thanks for joining us, man. Um, we were just talking about that little giveaway we got going. Uh, better late than never. So yeah, um, join us for episode one, guys. And there's another little close-up on, on that guy there. And, and you can win the, all that stuff. All right. Uh, let's dive straight into the uh, into the next character. Um, let's go right. with you, Mark. Who are we looking at here? Who is this guy? Who's this handsome fellow? This guy is Serathel Duskrin. Um, he is a half drow paladin from far, far away. Serathel Duskrin from far, far yes. away. Yes, Where? his uh, father was a drow who served, you know, in the Underdark as most drow do, but didn't really like it, so he failed. Um, his mother's a high elf, um, but not from any of the really known lands of Faerun, and he's from like a far off place in the middle of nowhere this town's a bit different like they're um think think hippie utopia like they don't have money they just do what they need to do they all live but it's a big place it's not like you know it's it's primitive um, they have all the things most people would have it's just as their own sort of little society away from everything else they're a little bit, little bit weird. Don't he doesn't really know Faerun that well, um, but his order is all about um, keeping the realm safe from extra planar bad guys. Oh, you had me worried for a second there, Grace. Thought you'd burnt. Uh... Yes, sorry. Yeah. Oh no. No, yeah, you're back. Fantastic. Oh. You're not on fire. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I should just say as well the the portrait we've got up here. I actually put that together on uh, Hero Forge. Um, so that was uh, it's pretty cool. You can go and build your own minis on there and get them to to print them and paint them and stuff. I just grabbed a little screen grabby of it. That's right. Um, I want to try and find something better, but I've used uh, I've used Hero Forge in the past as well um, to make a mini. Uh, they're they're really awesome. Um, easy to find. Just Google Hero Forge. It'll come up. You can uh, you can yep. go through and it's got like all different selections uh, that you can make for your characters. So race, you know, all the clothes and equipment that they have. And you can do yeah. a couple of things. You can either order it online and they print it out and send it to you, or you can actually order just a digital copy of it, and they'll uh, just send you through uh, a file, and you can you can get that printed off uh, somewhere. Yeah, so, yeah, it's a really cool service. Um, yeah, it's so creepy. a Horizon Walker is that correct? Uh, what? Uh, well, Fizz Cannon's saying, uh, yeah, thanks for that, Fizz Cannon. Chucking that Hero Forge up there. Uh, Fizz Cannon was saying, uh, is uh, is Serothor a Horizon Walker? No, I don't think that's correct. He's a. I'm not sure what that is. Paladin. Um, yes. It's a Ranger subclass. Yeah, it's Ranger. Walker. Yeah. Ah. Sounds cool, though. Same kind of theme, though, a Horizon Walker, like, you know, extra planetary defense. Yeah, so I think All he right, went cool. with, uh, with Paladin. Yeah. It yeah, uh, Order of the Watchers Order is what he'll take when he has to take his oath. Uh, um, or Oath of the Watchers, sorry. Um, so they're all about keeping an eye out for, you know, um, malignant threats from outside the realm, you know. So if it's if it's like a fae that's just here to chill out, they're cool. But if it's a, a demon or a fiend or something trying to cause trouble, that's what he's always going to be on the lookout for. Um, so he's on the lookout for uh, for me, basically. Um <laughs> 
So uh, I've got the I've got the, dr the drow, the dark elf stats up there. As yeah. a drow, you're infused with the magic of the underdark and underground realm of wonders and horrors rarely seen on the surface above. Of course, the underdark uh, in uh, in Forgotten Realms lore is like a, a labyrinthine set uh, of uh, like tunnels and, and caves and, and network uh, of, of cave systems that pretty much honeycombs throughout uh, pretty much the entire world, and it's a an extremely hostile and uh, and deadly environment, and it's the the home, uh, the home, the home place of the Drow, which is uh, where your character uh, you weren't actually well, he, born. He's man. no, no, he's he's only half Drow. So his father was Drow, okay. um, but he never spoke of his time in the Underdark to to Serethil or Sereth for short, because I'm probably going to get lazy. Um, so the half Drow, I picked it up out of the shared content you had in the thing, and they basically have the same stuff as drow but they don't have the sunlight sensitivity okay cool, cool, cool. um so uh and my dark vision isn't superior i've only got 60 feet dark vision not 120. Um, trade-off yeah but i still have the fey ancestry so advantage on saving throws against charmed and magic can't put me to sleep same as you know the elves and stuff yep and i have drow magic access i start off with dancing lights um at third level i get fairy fire fifth i get darkness um charisma is spell casting for that darkness we got some uh yeah. we got some real uh some uh, edgy characters going on uh we're <laughs> casting darkness we have a, a wizard uh yeah. the, the thing about this dude though right is that he's like he's super young and he's super naive like he's never seen most of the stuff in favor and before like everything he's coming across it's for the first time so it's a bit like wide-eyed deer in the headlights some of the time uh and of course you chose uh like like we touched on earlier the paladin class um generally speaking yes. uh at least in, in in bygone ages uh paladins were limited to being um lawful good characters now it's a little bit more uh open to interpretation um your paladin yes. can be uh any uh, any what is it? Uh, what's it called? What's it called? Um, Remy. What's it called again? Alignment. 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 That's the one. See, as soon as I start streaming, the English language just uh, falls <laughs> out of my ears. You can be any alignment you want these days. So, what uh, what alignment do you actually choose for Sarathel? Uh, chaotic good. Chaotic good. So still good. Yes. Uh, but you're not going to be always uh, sticking to the laws of the land. No, like one, he doesn't really know them that well. He's still learning them. Um, and his basic premise is so long as innocents don't get hurt, get the job done. Okay, I like it. Uh, class features there. Uh, you got a D10 for hit dice, which is pretty good. Second best one you can get, I believe. Nice. Um, you know, you got all your proficiency there, blah, 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 stuff no one cares about. Yep. Um, you I have... can play a loot. You can play a loot. That's always fun. Um, yes. I want you to buy a real lute and play it live uh, on the stream. Can, can I just play a guitar? No, no, it has to be a lute. Sorry, I have to get a real lute. You have to get a real lute, yeah. Okay, they're, they're not cheap. Yeah, we we, we want to like it's about immersion, buddy. We want immersion, so it All can't right. be a guitar. Well, if, if someone out there wants to supply the stream with a lute, I will play it. That's right, guys. Uh, you heard it here first. If you want a, the first D and D stream with a live lute playing, um, head over to Ko-Fi and uh, start donating because I want to see that, <laughs> and I think you all want to see that as well. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll need a little bit of time to loot. to transfer guitar knowledge into lute, but it shouldn't be that difficult. Oh, I'm sure you can sort it out in two weeks' It'll time. It'll be fine. Um, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll be able to do something with it. Divine sense. Uh, oh, this one's pretty cool. Yeah, you talk. You go. I don't want to talk. This one's... Ah, oh, sorry. Um, so as an action, I can detect good and evil until the end of my next turn, can sense anything affected by the hallow spell or know the location of any celestial fiend or undead within 60 feet. That is not behind total cover. And I can use it four times per long rest. So, yeah, I can pretty much just, like, get into a place and be like, is there anything spooky or anything, like, really, really good, you know, if we're trying to find help or something? That can be helpful. And uh, last but not least, and, and one of those things that always draws people towards uh, towards Paladin, um, damage control, lay on hands. Yes, I don't mind this. I'm, I'm, I, I need to look into it. Does it get? Does the healing pool get any bigger? Yeah, it gets yes, massive. It yes, oh, it does. okay, cool. So I start off with what? What is it like? Five hit points I can use, and I can divvy them out. I just have to touch someone, and I can give them a hit point. That's correct. Um, or so I you can get... use five to cure. Five times your level, 
um, is like a total pool of hit dice that you can that you can heal. Ooh. So you can either you can choose to heal someone for one hit point of damage, which is like particularly useful for when someone goes down and is rolling. Yeah, just uh, psh, they're save up. those. You just touch them with your pinky and boop, they get back up and they're good to go yep. again. And then you can start nice. healing them properly, uh, or you can of course choose to do all of your healing at once. So at level one, that's five. Level two, yeah, yeah. It becomes uh, quite. Uh, quite a good skill to have uh yeah at fully yeah so it's uh yeah pretty pretty well, beefy. even at first level i can cure a disease yeah that's right yeah this gotta is dump I... all of those points in uh so yeah that's that's a pretty good skill to have i always picture lay on hands as like you walk up and essentially touch them on the butt they go, boop, and, uh, they're, uh, it's, they're it's gonna depend better. which character i'm i'm trying to heal i suppose like you that's know. canon has to be done for every character. It's, it's every oh character. God. Even if you're laying hands on yourself, you have to centrally touch yourself on the pipe. So hold on, guys. Oh, great. Hold on. Great. Oh, I didn't gosh. intend for this. I didn't intend for this paladin to be actually problematic. <laughs> yeah, someone's gonna have to talk to him about that. It's uh, inappropriate touching in the workplace. Well, he doesn't Touched know. It's it's like perfectly okay in his society. It's right? normal where he's from. Everyone walks around yeah. touching each other on the butts. Yeah uh sweet what is the next slide this is here yeah, this is new for me far traveler is the background that uh, yes character. and this is as we alluded to so he's basically from some it's, it's not really specific it can be like he's from somewhere else in the world beyond pharaoh or some hidden corner that's just been kind of forgotten about and so he's um not really familiar with with what he's you know running across he's, he's been traveling for about a year um, maybe two by now, I think. I have to double check the backstory. Um, so we've seen a little bit, but generally everything he encounters is going to be for the first time. Um, uh, they give you like uh, suggestions, options for places that you can be from that are, um, you know, exotic, different. Um, mm -hmm. Halrua, Evermeet, Karatur, all that kind of stuff. But you've chosen to, uh, to homebrew uh, something. Yeah. Yeah. Um... So it's a little, it's a little, you know, I haven't really decided where it's going to be, but basically a little, um, I guess, small city would probably be the best way to describe it. But it's, it, you know, it's not huge. I'd like about to this. picture it as like a city state. Is that sum it up? Yeah. 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 yeah that's good. Um, and so they, they have, they're self-sufficient. They have everything they need. Um, they have their own religious orders. They have their own, you know, um, wizarding orders. Um, you know military all that kind of stuff so um and they're just they don't really deal much with the rest of the world they keep to themselves except for um the religious orders that he's a part of that go out into the world to help keep us safe from the the stuff from other planes i get little um, little uh witcher vibes yeah maybe a little um might not be a coincidence that I just finished watching The Witcher not long after. <laughs> as soon as <laughs> I read the character, I'm like, yeah, I know what this is. <laughs> but I did not do that deliberately. I think that just sort of happens. I, I don't mind. I, whenever I make yep. the characters, they're always inspired by something. Um, so yeah, no, cool. I'm, I'm cool with it. And it's, it's not like you called him Gerald of... No. Or something <laughs> like that. You've made a completely unique character. It's just got something. Yeah. yeah. No, it's cool. I dig it. I love it. Um, yeah. All right. And let's one go. One little twist uh, just, just um, yeah. on where he's from. Like um, the the deities that he worships, I suppose. I think we sort of touched on that this could be an issue for him encountering other religious peoples. Um, being that they're, the way his people sees them, it's not necessarily what they are, but it's like... You know the whole hippie idea of the universe and so the gods are to him just the expression of this essence and he directly worships that essence and it speaks to him and his people and so he's kind of a bit like huh quaint when he comes across people who worship actual deities uh, I, I could see that being a problem if there was a cleric in the in the party. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he would try and explain as if it's, it's not that he doesn't believe that their deities are real. It's just that the essence that is what they are is um, a little more raw than than that. If you get what I mean, and it's kind of like it, it's the 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 ether, the essence of everything is conscious. And that's what's speaking to his people as well as all of the other people through their particular deities. But it doesn't need that face. 
But in reality, I think it's actually just a couple of fallen celestials that are fucking with his people. Sorry, language. But yes. <laughs> no, that's all good. This is not a. This isn't a show for kids. Let's just get that out cool. there right now. Um, yep. If you're three years old and you're watching this, turn it off. Go watch Slippy <laughs> or whatever it is you kids watch these days. Yeah. Uh, and Toby, um, I am. Uh, I am open to PvP. By the way, so just put that <laughs> out there. <laughs> I will roll initiative for you guys if you want to roll initiative. Um, let's get to the fun part. Let's get to the part that everyone's come here for. Let's roll, roll some dice, some stats. All right, I will flip back over to here. I'm going to do it on Beyond because I've only got one D6 and it will take forever if we do it that way. Yeah, let's not do that. Yeah, so I'm going to flick over here. I used a standard array when I wrote it up, so I'll just get rid of that. Look at you, uh, Noble Yarn. Teletubbies, that's old school, man. Kids don't watch that anymore these days. And you're rolled. Okay, let's go for the first try, shall we? Let's do it. First one. Eleven. Okay, all right. Uh, that's, uh, Not so terrible. It's a good place to start. We can go up, yep. we can go down. It's like a roller coaster ride. Let's go. All right. What are we getting? Fifteen? Fifteen. Mm. All right. All right. Okay. Number three? Sixteen. I'm liking this so far. Sixteen. I'm and not liking again. this. I know you're not. <laughs> oh, eighteen. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think God. I'm keeping this. I don't even need a... What, what are my next ones? Um, Fourteen. And... Six. And six. Oh, there we go. Oof. That's something I can play with. Yes, I like that six. I will take that. That is perfect. You I will give it You've got to even it out somehow. So. Yeah, look, um, the six is going into my wisdom oh. because I don't know, you know, I don't know well really what I'm doing, where I am. I'm like young as for an elf. Sure, you don't want to throw that in your strength. No, no way. Constitution. Okay. Now the really cool thing is I already get a plus two to my charisma. So if I put the 16 in there, that means my spells are just going to be great. Um, and then I can add plus one to a couple of other things. So if I add, I'm adding plus one to my con. So if I put uh, 15 as the con, I'll end up with a con of 16. I'll make the strength 18. And then we can have a dex of 11, because who needs dex when you're aiming for plate mail? And that will put my intelligence at 14, so I'm not stupid. Sweet, 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 good stuff. I love that six. Um, I, yeah. I, I promise I won't exploit that at every possible opportunity. <laughs> oh, dude, I, I, I'm like, I'm, I'm tough, and I'm smart, and I'm quick, and I'm charismatic, and I'm tough, but I don't know what's going on around me. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, it's, uh, it sounds familiar. Um, uh, just, just quickly, guys, we got, we got, uh, we got Othic Gaming with us tonight. Uh, Othic Gaming, of course, has his own uh, Twitch channel, which I DM uh, uh, Baldur's Gate sent to Avernus for. So you guys, uh, if you're if you're watching this live, check him out as well. Because um, uh, I think uh, the last session is still up on that channel, and it is a lot of fun because I lost all my notes and had to add lib everything. Um, uh. So yeah, yeah, check that one out as well, guys. Is I, I I DM for that. Oh jerk. Wait. Uh, all right. Uh, what is next? Who do we have? We have. Oh no, it's the Underdark. I do I have that? This guy. It's Thor from Ragnarok, everyone. That's right. We're going to be joined by Chris Hemsworth himself. <laughs> In the flesh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, hey, how's about that for a uh, uh, celebrity endorsement? No, guys, that's not canon. Chris Hemsworth is not joining us. Um, uh, let's uh, let's talk about this character, Toby. Who are we looking at? Yeah, so this uh, is Perseus. He's a little a little cheeky nod to a character I played in another campaign. Um, so I'm sort of bringing back and revamping this one. Um, but he is a just a man from humble beginnings. Um, Joined the uh, Baldur's Gate army at a pretty young age. Uh, is a, what was a standard bearer uh, in the army. Um, due to an incident that he can't really remember, uh, very vague and doesn't have memories of that time. Um, he something happened and he got these uh, gifts, which he's uh, still figuring out. Um, he's talked to a couple of people throughout uh, the Sword Coast, and they say it lingers towards the uh the cleric side of house uh but the sort of domain that it 
uh, falls under is very unknown. So he's on a kind of pilgrimage nomad journey around uh, um, the Sword Coast to sort of figure out where these powers are coming from and how he's got them and sort of what the whole goes with them all. So when we're talking about gifts, we're not talking about like three francs of incense or something like that. We're talking about magical abilities. Yeah, a couple of uh, little sparky fingers that he's found out so far. And that's about as far as he's gotten in the last sort of six months since this happened. Are we going go, to make that the official nickname? Sparkles, just like Ragnarok? Sparkles, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And he is, of course, a human, the most exciting of uh, D&D races. Yeah. I thought I'd bring it back to Earth with uh, not be exciting, just be the uh, white bread guy of the yeah. group. Everything else is wild. Well, let's uh, let's keep things uh, simple. Um, why don't we talk about all the crazy things that humans are able to do? Um, got their stats here for you guys. It's just a whole bunch of excitement. Uh, of course, humans are one of the most widespread races uh, in Faerun. You can find them pretty much everywhere that you go. Um, and there's, you know, just a huge variety uh, of humans uh, in Faerun. They're the most, I think they're the most common race. Um, and they're, they're all over the place. And it gives you some suggestions about, you know, where they can be from. Kalashite, uh, Chondathan, I think I'm ruining that name, butchering it. But, you know, get over it. I'm the DM. That's what it's called now. Uh, Luskan, Mulan, Rashemi, you know, all that kind of places. Do you have an idea about uh, where where Perseus is from? Or are we just leaving that open? Yeah, from Baldur's Gate. Uh, born and raised in Baldur's Gate. Oh, so. cool, cool, cool. I'm familiar with that location. Yeah. Maybe you've uh, you've met some of the characters from our other campaign. Um, yeah, he, ha- he hasn't he hasn't heard much from Baldur's Gate in a couple of months. He doesn't know why. <laughs> uh, yeah, I wonder what happened. Uh, <laughs> don't look that up. Uh, human traits. Uh, so you, with the, with a human, uh, this is going to be particularly useful for you when you roll really low stats. Uh, Correct. Your ability scores each increase by one, so you get plus one to every ability score. Uh, obviously, we all know how humans age. They they die by the age of 33. Um, <laughs> generally speaking. Yeah, or sooner. Or sooner. Or sooner. 32, Don't good. say so. I'm 33 right now, so I'm at the end of my lifespan. Um, base walking speed, 30 feet. Languages can read and write common in one extra language of your choice. What, uh, what does Perseus read and write? Uh, so his extra language that he learnt was Celestial, Celestial. which um, it, he's been told kind of is linked to his uh, newfound abilities. Okay, so, cool. Well, yeah. I can't wait to, to dive into that little mystery. Um, and you are, of course, a cleric. Um, healers and warriors, divine magic, as the name suggests, is the power of the gods flowing from them into the world. Clerics are conduits for that power, manifesting it as miraculous effects. The gods don't grant this power to everyone who seeks it, but only those chosen to fulfill a higher calling. Uh, so that pretty much sums up your, your character. You've been chosen for a higher calling. Yeah, so um, yeah, the kind of idea is playing a little bit against the trope, not like going to be the holy boy. He's kind of just like never had anything to do with magic or never really been kind of of the cloth, and then it's just been thrusted, you know, neck deep into the deep end of what is going to be divine justice so we don't need to know about his sex life but it was just keep to the class, <laughs> yeah. to the class. uh we yeah. don't need to know about what he was thrusted into um <laughs> class features you have a hit dice of 1d8 uh blah blah, blah. proficiencies yes yeah, stuff like that we'll, we'll get into that during gameplay don't worry about that stuff spell casting uh you as a conduit of divine power you can cast cleric spells um and you have some cantrips as well um, why don't we talk about uh, have you chosen cantrips yet? Uh, you have chosen uh, some cantrips yet. These are the first spells that he kind of was able to get a handle on. Uh, and now, because I went back and changed my ability scores, I can't look them up. Uh, but oh. uh, I've gone with Spare the Dying, which he has used once, um, which, because of his new uh, abilities, that focus more towards the uh, lightning sort of sparkles. Uh, he likes to run his knuckles together and make a little static charge and defibrillate someone's chest. Oh, That's why he does spare it. the dying. Love it. Nice. Um, I think I told the dead was the other one I took, and then of course, being a cleric, you have to have guidance. So um, you're going to be able to uh, do a little uh, <laughs> duet with the, uh, with the with the wizard with the told the dead thing going on. Yeah, make some <laughs> ding harmony dong, bells. Ding dong, ding it's the only duet, right? 
And look, I get spells in a few levels too. I'll take it as well. We can get a whole band going on. <laughs> a whole band. <laughs> just, just, just let, let, uh, just, 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 <laughs> just let the barbarian charge in and carve stuff up while we're playing the the, the war drums in the background. <laughs> well, it's it's war bells. Yeah. Let's, let's not get that's too right. it's the war, well, the war yeah. triangles. <laughs> <laughs> the war triangles. Yeah, that's very intimidating. Oh, gotta... much, no, just the axe. <laughs> we, got a, we got a humanoid, uh, humanoid cat rushing towards you while bells chime somewhere in the distance. It's very intimidating. Yes. Um, and you cast your spells using wisdom, I believe. Is your spell casting? Yes. Wisdom is the spell casting ability for clerics. So you want to roll very low for that one. Um, there we go. Spell casting ability uh, is wisdom, and you get them back with a long rest. Spell save DC, 8 plus your proficiency bonus, blah, 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 a whole bunch of stuff. And you have to choose a divine domain. If you don't want to talk about the divine domain just yet, we can uh, we can, we can let that uh, unfurl naturally if you want. No, yeah, so the, uh, yeah, the divine domain I've uh, chosen is Tempest. So we're Tempest Cleric. Um, the god that has given him these powers, he's still very unaware of. So yeah, that's very up in the air at the moment. Cool, cool, cool. Looking forward for that. Tempest Domain, I actually have that already prepared. Look at me. It's almost like I know what I'm doing. Um, gods whose portfolios include Tempest Domain include Talos, Umberly, Kord, whoever that guy is, uh, the Devourer, Zeus and Thor, uh, Govern Storm, Sea, and the Sky, blah, 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 blah. Um, so at first level, you get uh, the Tempest Domain spells of Fog Cloud and Thunder Wave. Uh, yeah, so a little bit different to um, uh, like w uh, wizards, because uh, oh, I think they get to choose their uh, spells every day as well. But um, with your divine domains, um, you have a certain amount of spells that are always picked, so you get like a uh, like six or seven to choose from each day that you can swap out. Um, but these uh, spells on this list will always be locked in, so I'll always have at least these two on my list. Yep, mm. and they get uh, they get a little bit beefier as you go up in levels. You know, as, as you yeah. can see in that little table there, they go up to a ninth level. Destructive wave, never even heard of that. Don't want to see that. Um, and proficiencies and wrath of the storm. That's fun. Let's talk about wrath of the storm. Yeah, so basically, if someone hits me, I can get a little bit angry and just give a big zap of lightning back at them. So if anyone comes too close, I can gonna get a rude shock. Start the um, puns early, uh, I, and then. At later levels, that comes even better too. Because if someone, as soon as I do lightning damage to someone, I can push them ten feet away at six levels. So as long as I hit someone with lightning damage, I can just push them ten feet away. So if someone gets too close, I can shoo lightning them away. Nice. And, and like yeah. I said earlier, um, this this is uh, for everyone. I, I I allow PvP. So go go nuts, guys. Yeah. Um, so which ties well with the uh, channel divinity they get so instead of uh, rolling for thunder and lightning damage they can just use their channel divinity to deal the absolute maximum amount of damage so so a nice little cool lightning we good yeah. so looking forward to that um what about your background i i i, I seem to have uh, neglected to get your background what did you choose for that uh so just went into soldier so soldier. that's the background it shows it's these um just, uh, he joined the army at a really early age and just been a part of the um, Baldur's Gate uh, army for all his life. He was a standard bearer. I rolled a D8 because there's an uh, option of one to eight uh, options you can choose from of what sort of role you had in the army. Uh, and then I rolled a seven, which is standard bearer. So okay, cool. the guy who held the flags during the, the battles. So does that make you a member of the Flaming Fist? Uh, loosely. Uh, more sort of like the Flaming Fist is like... I won't say cannon fodder, but uh, <laughs> they're kind of yeah. The flaming fist kind of like controls the army a little bit. So, uh, yeah. can I get your best? Uh, I serve the flaming fist. <laughs> uh, I no longer serve the flaming fist. So, come on. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I might get teased right, towards the end of the campaign. Fine. All right. Um, <laughs> let's uh, let's do that fun part of the night. Let's roll some dice. I know that's your uh, your, your strong suit. Be at out of combat dice rolling is all me. <laughs> so let's get this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love that face. Let's talk about this uh, number. A three? So dropping the lowest one, uh, that is a four. A four. Oh, oh my God. 
three oh. ones and a two. Brutal. <laughs> Drop that one in intelligence and uh, role play that for me. I'll put that in wisdom and then have. <laughs> oh, Alright, four. Good start. Get yeah. stopped. Okay. Uh, better. Uh, that is a thir 13. Oh, okay. Right. 13. Good. Whoa. Uh, that's an 11. An 11. Okay, that's not bad. It's alright. Four's really let you oh. down now. Great. <laughs> that four's a, a worry. 12. 12. Still not great. Still. I think might be going for this reroll, I think. <laughs> Just quietly. Uh, <laughs> I wanted at least that, one. A 14. 14. Last one is a That's fourteen again. Fourteen. All right. Good. So we got a, a four, a thirteen, an eleven, a twelve, a fourteen, and a fourteen. And you're going to be oh, sticking with that one, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, absolutely not. That four is way too spicy. <laughs> uh, what's that? Is that? That's like a negative five four. or something, isn't it? No, no, no. It would be a negative three. Ugh. There, are, there are animals that are more intelligent than that. If you, if you put that more intelligence, yeah. um, I'll put that. I'll put that in cons, so I'm like a brittle old man. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> the power of God compels you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you can't teach a game if I die of old age. So jokes on you. <laughs> uh, Back in my day. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if, if you have a heart attack, do you go into uh, death saving rolls and then you can just uh, healing touch him, centrally touch him <laughs> on the butt, bring him back to life? And uh, does he does he does he still have the heart attack or does that just go away? I just beg him to let me die. <laughs> <laughs> you have a big tattoo across your chest. Do not revive. Well, look, if 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 you're having a heart attack, wouldn't that if it's an ongoing event, couldn't that be like damage over time? But technically, you could fall below zero. I could res you. You could fall below zero again. We could do this five times before we, before you actually go. Oh I've, got, I've got a simple solution, guys. I just come over there, do some stuff, and he's with us forever. <laughs> yeah, I like that. We, uh, we you know what? Yeah. All right. Just, um, just so you know, I have no problem with necromancy. I have Thanks. all the problems they're, with necromancy. They're from they're from this plane of existence, so it's not a drama. It's just extending life beyond its yeah. normal means, you know? That's, that's fine. It's still material plane shit. Like, no worries. Looks like the, the weighted dice I ordered, I, I pressed the, the always roll on one instead of always roll on six. So oh, yeah. I hate it when you do that when you're ordering <laughs> yeah. the weighted dice online. They have it the yeah. option. Yeah. Oh, happens all the time. Dude. Classic mistake. Classic mistake, Toby. Uh, did, yeah, well, I'm going to re-roll because that's... Right. No ideal. I got uh, I got one. I got the one that I wanted. I got a re-roll. This is when things start okay. to get extra spicy because now if you I re -roll, re rolled. I re-rolled as well. Oh you did, four, yes. Four, Sorry you did. Three, Come four. on, you bastard, don't you do this to me again. <laughs> That's a twelve. Twelve, okay. It's a better start. Much better start, much better start. Okay. And nothing higher than a twelve. Ooh, oh, Just no. All twelves. Uh, that's a nine. A nine. <laughs> yep. Nine. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, no, no, we're getting there, we're getting there. Still not a four, so I'm happy. That, uh, that's a... A... Eighteen. Eighteen. Yes. Uh, yes. All right. All right, fine. I'll allow yeah. it. <laughs> I'll allow it. Uh, what's that? Three. Uh, that is... There you are. A... Fifteen. A fifteen. Okay. Look at you. Lighten up the uh, the D &D sphere here with these guys. Uh, that is a uh, twelve again. Twelve. All right. And then lucky blast. One of us. One Come on, don't you dare. Eighteen again. Yes. Oh damn it. Yes. Damn it. Oh. Oh. Yes, I didn't thanks. want to have four <laughs> characters with well-rolled stats. This is this is not what I signed up for. Oh. <laughs> yes, 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 oh. yes, and yes. All right, <laughs> gut-wrenching roll. Ugh. But hey, I hey, gambled guys, and I lost. We actually have a chance of being dead set heroes. We've got the stats <laughs> for I it. Get past one. Yeah. 
No, no, no. Crit, it, that one die straight away. A wizard yeah, yeah. might well, actually live. <laughs> level four is when you start saying those words. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, for those watching the, the, the live, so I'm going to go live again tomorrow night, and I'm just going to be just changing all the stats of all my monsters. We're so going to be adding a plus four, plus two. Oh, what? Legendary action? Yeah, sure. I'm going to chuck that in. So that's going to be fun. <laughs> well, you told us level five is when we need to start being worried about TPK. So that, that wasn't me that I said out. that. You need to be worried at TPK level one. That's when you yeah, need level, to be worried. At TPK. Level one is the spice of life. Level <laughs> until you hit level four, it's uh, you're living on a nice Any game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well done. Uh, we've rolled some some brilliant stats, right. and we, we've uh, we've we've made some awesome characters. And I'm really looking forward to uh, to seeing how you ruin my life with these stats that you guys rolled. <laughs> yeah, um, my my strength of nineteen. Your strength of nineteen. Yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. You have poison straight away. My yeah. dex of nineteen. <laughs> um. <laughs> So before we finish up, uh, there's a couple of things uh, that I wanted to talk about uh, with you guys. Mm. Um, first of all, uh, I, I, I feel like it's uh, it's important. I think I've I've touched base with you guys about this before. This is not an easy campaign, guys. It's not a campaign, uh, generally speaking, for beginner players. Um, this one this one's rough, and uh, there's a lot of. Uh, um, like uh, bits and pieces that you have to keep track of. For instance, uh, like I have up on the screen right now, um, there's survival elements to this campaign uh, that are important. Uh, so you guys are actually going to have to keep track of uh, how many pounds of food and water uh, you have. At least, uh, at least for the beginning of the campaign, because it does actually become important uh, with this campaign. And it's going to add a little bit of an element of, uh, of difficulty uh, that I think is going to keep people on the edge and maybe counteract those ridiculous uh, stats that you guys just rolled. <laughs> Lehman's trying to hut, anybody? Oh, crap. Can, 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 yeah, can, I'm onto it. can any of our spellcasters take Goodberry? Um, yeah, I mean... <laughs> Maybe. Uh, I don't think wizards get that. I think that's a, a druid. No, I think uh, it's a druid thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a druid ranger thing. I can see Druid ranger thing? Alright. So, yeah. so you know that multi-class into bard I was talking about? <gasps> Wait. <laughs> Wait. Bards can do heroes feasts. Not for oh. a while, though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, yeah, that's going to that's gonna be something that uh, that you need to keep track of. And and the reason for that's going to uh, gonna become apparent uh, on episode one. So, if, you know, if you want to know what we're talking about, join us for episode one, guys. Um, and uh, Fizz Cannon suggests, you know, create food and water. I think that's a, that's a wizard spell, if I'm correct. That's a paladin oh, spell. Yeah. That was a paladin yeah. spell. Oh, it's paladin yeah. and cleric think, spells. So cleric did your level, well, yeah. Uh, yeah, level five cleric can cast it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> too, too bad we don't have any clerics in there. In the... Too bad we don't have any clerics. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have Lehman's tiny hut covered, guys, once, once I get high enough level. If you get high Thank enough level. Thank you. <laughs> So yeah, it's a it's, yeah. it's a difficult campaign, yeah. but uh, there's a couple of little things <clears throat> that I, I I'll throw in there to make th make life a little bit more interesting. I already spoke to you guys that um, I'm going to be playing not rules as written. Where I mean, uh, of course I'm going to be following the rules of the DM. It's important to follow the rules, but I think to make the campaign more interesting, you have to go off the beaten track a little bit. So there's a couple of little house rules I'm going to chuck in there. The first one's just you know, uh, I'm going to be changing uh, flanking. Generally speaking, flanking gives you advantage on your rolls, um, but there are instances where that can make certain feats and abilities that classes get uh, defunct. Um, so I am changing uh, advantage to a plus two. We got a plus two to hit uh, for flanking. Flanking, of course, uh, is when uh, you have a you have a bad guy. One character is on one side. One character is directly opposite. Uh, you're going to get a plus two uh, to your hit, guys. Um, so, so how does a rogue then um, use that to get sneak attack? Because they need to have advantage for that, don't that's they? That's great. You're going to have to find different ways uh, to get advantage. For instance, hiding uh, and then uh, taking the shot and, uh, and, and basically just being sneaky. You're not just going to get yeah. free sneak attacks just because someone's standing uh, either side of them. I think that's... Uh, does that sound like a good house rule to everyone? Yeah, yeah. Why not? With yeah. Uh, 
with my new campaign, I'll be implementing that as well because I currently have flanking as advantage and it does make, like you say, some things like barbarians, you know, fighters, battle masters just uh, easily excel in situations where it should be not so. So, yeah, I, I agree with that. Plus two makes sense. So plus two still gives you a, a good little bonus to hit, but it's not like not overpowered but still yeah. it's still going to encourage um, like tactical maneuvering and stuff like that because you still want to get that plus two to hit of course you do um, but yeah. you have to think about it a little bit because you're not going to just straight up get advantage um, yeah, well, I'm, I'm not playing a rogue yet so it's not, not, not really um, going to bother yeah. me but I, I think that might actually make an, make for an interesting way to play with a rogue that I have written because he's a bugbear a rogue, he's yeah, super, a rogue bugbear he's, Super sneaky and like has has reach and probably a pole arm as well. So yeah, he I'm can sure, probably just uh, like hide behind a corner. And just like... I'm sure we'll get to meet your rogue bugbear on maybe episode three. <laughs> we all have we all go through three characters each. <laughs> yeah, I like my paladin. No, um, second I'd one. I'd like to play him for a little while. Second one that I did uh, that I implemented, and I actually uh, I already talked to you guys about this, but I want to talk about live on air as well. Um, uh, someone asked if they could use their weapon to do a different type of damage, and I was like, let's just make <sighs> a house rule. Yes, that's right, Mark. Uh, you asked that. Let's just make a house rule. If you can. Uh, uh, reasonably conceive of doing a different uh, damage type with your weapon, for instance. Oh, have a look at this longsword I have here in the background. Uh, a longsword, for instance, of course, the uh, the obvious thing is the blade. You can hit someone with the blade, you can do slashing damage. But it's not limited to that. You can stab someone with the point of your longsword, you can do piercing damage. You can flip it around and hit them with the end and bash their brain in. Bludgeoning damage. Now, just to make things simple, um, let's say your longsword uh, does uh, 1d10 damage. Uh, if you make an attack with it, you want to do bludgeoning damage instead. Uh, you will be doing just one damage increment less. So the 1d10 goes down to a 1d8. So you would do 1d8 bludgeoning damage or piercing damage or, or whatever it is that you, uh, that you come up with your particular weapon. So for instance, if you have a spear, uh, Remy, you can still slice someone with a spear. You can spin it around and whack someone with the end of the spear. You can do bludgeoning damage. You can do slashing damage. It'll just be one damage increment less, but no less than one d4. Does that make sense to everyone? Yep. Our friend day. And uh, for your character, uh, Grace, you've got. Uh, do you, you have an axe, don't you? A great axe. Yeah. You've got a great axe. Yeah. So yeah, I think that does. 2d something 2d6 damage is that right uh, uh, yeah. 1D12. that sounds about right. yeah it's 1d12 oh, i think 1D12. the great sword is 2d6 uh -huh. yeah. yeah there we go so 1d12 damage that'll just be you can you can flip it over or just hit someone with the with the blunt edge uh blunt side of your great axe and you can do 1d10 bludgeoning damage which is well when uh, you said that you reminded me of like shoveling someone like with the back of a shovel but with the flat yeah. end of the axe exactly yeah and there's, yeah. there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to do that originally i was just going to implement the you know the uh the improvised weapons um rules this is just a little bit of a a, a reflavor of improvised weapons because there's no reason why yeah you, you can't whack someone on the on the top of the head with a dagger and just treat it like an improvised weapon so that's how that's going to work oh, uh, and that'll add a little bit of flavor, a little bit of fun, and uh, also if something's resistant to a particular type of damage, it gives you a little bit of uh, uh, a way to deal with that without having to switch weapons. Um, so I like to... Um, rules as intended, if that makes sense. Rule of cool. And that sort of applies to everything, guys. If you can, uh, for instance, uh, with, with a spell, it does lightning damage. You're in a tunnel. Um, if you, if you put your hand up and say, hey, I want to cast uh, uh, chain lightning on the roof to cause a collapse, um, can I do that? Yeah, absolutely. You can do bludgeoning damage with that as opposed to, you know, the lightning damage. Sure. Everyone uh, everyone cool with that? Yeah, definitely. A little bit of yeah. openness, a little definitely. bit of pliability with the rules. Um, I think it makes for more interesting gameplay uh, and it makes you guys think a little bit more creative. and makes the stream also more fun for, for people mm. to watch. No one wants to sit I, here. I, 
I think yeah. it would be nice with like the magic thing, like, you know, if you're going to try and blow a roof off with lightning, like if it's made of solid stone, like that's just going to absorb electricity. Oh, well, you know, stop I, it. I think it would, it would need to make like sense the kind of magic you would use on it, maybe like a fireball could possibly do it. But, you know, I, I don't know. I'm just spitballing. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm happy to, to listen to people's... Uh... Uh, suggestions. We'll put it that way. I'm not going to just yeah. flat out say no to, to everything that you that you want to do creatively. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and yes and everything because yes and is my policy when it comes to D and D and tabletop gaming. Um, Very nice. But that doesn't mean that you can get away with everything. You can't say, hey, I want to toss my dagger at that guy and use fire damage. I'm sorry, I, I can't find I can't find a way that that works. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's, yeah, don't think you can get away with anything that you can come up with on that crazy head of yours. Um, Magic. Unless you light the hills on fire. Yeah. And I'll the hills is leather. Yeah, I mean, if if you can if you can <laughs> reasonably conceive of it, then then yeah, I mean, and I think you're wasting you your bonus of, action to set the knife up to do that, yeah. And, and then that, yeah, exactly. And I, I, I will have to find a way that to make that work mechanically, and I'll let you know how that works. And then you can say, yeah, I think that's reasonable or I, I don't think that's reasonable. But in the end, I'll have the final say as long as we, uh, we all agree on that. Um, yes. Like I said, difficult campaign, guys. Uh, exhaustion uh, probably will come into play uh, during this campaign, especially for, uh, for your character, Grace, uh, given you've willingly submitted yourself to insomnia. <laughs> uh, so be familiar with... Well, I mean... All of that for the flavor of yeah no and, and that kind of stuff i also actively encourage between now and episode one if you think of some like character trait that isn't covered in the rule books um just throw it at me and we'll back and forth and we'll, we'll find a way to make it work these even though we've gone over you know all of these stats and, and all that kind of stuff for the characters it's not necessarily set in concrete yet guys if you if you think of something fun um just like throw it at me and we'll we'll try and find a way to make it work um i if you're looking for a uh a, a, a live stream of uh D, D that's by the book boring everyone sitting down just rattling off numbers and, and rules and that kind of stuff this isn't uh this probably isn't the right campaign for you guys i'm going to get a little bit fast and loose with the rules of course as a dm i need to i need to be beholden to a certain set of rules when something happens that sets the precedent for it happening again in the future um but yeah I, I i just i want you guys to to know that you can you can tackle problems creatively sweet um so whatever i throw at you um you always have an opportunity to to find a way of dealing with it um what else do i have written down here in my book of garbage um uh, is there anything anyone else wanted to, to ask or add uh, before we finish up for the night or um were we gonna do like what are we doing for experience are we doing milestone progression or XP um as uh, the kind of person who is a complete control freak when it comes to the campaigns uh, we're gonna be doing uh, milestone progression um, just right. because uh, awesome. I've already got a lot to keep track of um, and I like milestone progression in the sense that I don't have to find, um, like, I don't have to calculate how much experience you get for finding a creative way of dealing with things. If yeah, that makes cool. sense. Yeah. So yeah. it's just it's just easier for me to keep track of if everyone. Yes, yeah, uh, Cool with that, and you don't feel like you need to go out and grind. Yeah. Uh, for extra stuff and. You know, I'm I'm keen to try it. It wasn't a thing the last time I played D&D, so it'll be interesting. But I wanted to grind boars in the forest until we got to level 20. Well, we can... go play World of Warcraft. Get out of here. <laughs> Just on the tree doing chin-ups. <laughs> you, uh, yeah, you go to the, the goblin fortress. You kill all the goblins. You go sleep for 24 hours and then go back and they've all respawned. Yeah, it's yeah. not happening, guys. Yeah. There's no Damn respawning. Um, so, yeah. No I, respawns. I, I, I generally um, speaking like to use uh, milestone progression just because it keeps it's easier for me to track. Cool. 
but I will be fair uh, with that. If you guys go above and beyond and do extra cool stuff, then yeah, you'll you'll get a level a little bit sooner than you would have uh, if you just did things by the book. Does that make sense? Yeah, sweet. Yeah. Awesome. Anything else? Yeah. Um, HP. Are we rolling that, or are we averaging as we level up? Uh, generally speaking, the way that I do that, uh, I allow you to roll. Uh, if it's less than the average, you can just take the average. Okay, cool. Sweet as. So, yep. Yeah. Does that work for everyone? Works for me. I'll take whatever I can get. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just like that. I, I do always go about how Mine. I'm a harsh DM, but I'm not that harsh. Uh, yeah. If you level up and you roll a one, it sucks, man. So. <laughs> I'm going to be squishy anyway. I'm going to be so far back out of the fight. I'll be like, you can do it, guys. Guys, guys. My hit points are already 15, so I think I will well and truly be tanky. Yeah, actually, I need to check that. What are you, Yours are 15, mine are 13. What's your AC? Uh, 15 from the top my, of my head. I'll just my, triple check. 15. Yeah, mine's 18. Yeah, do you want to do like a, okay, a yeah, recap? Okay, you'll be tanky. What, yeah. Do like a recap what everyone's put their ability scores into and yeah that's yeah great let's idea. go over that real yeah. quick that's uh, that's not a bad idea uh, Toby you suggested it uh, what did you do with your ability scores uh, yes so uh, my first eighteen went of course into wisdom and then um, stuff and reasons I got a plus one to that as well so I that's nineteen um, my second eighteen went into strength which is state uh, state eighteen uh, my twelve went into dexterity. My 15 went into Constitution, uh, my 9 went into Intelligence, uh, and then my other 12 went into Charisma, which I got a plus 2 from Race, and that's gone up to 14. So you put the 9 in Intelligence? 9 in Intelligence, so minus 1 to Intelligence, which uh, ironically falls under Religion, so... <laughs> <laughs> Ironically, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm a paladin with a medicine um, skill roll of negative two. So okay, good, you minus plus six, so we're good. <laughs> yeah. you, you don't need a medicine skill, you've got lay on hands, buddy. You can search yeah, yeah, people on the butt. I know. I know. <laughs> That's probably why you've got such a bad medicine skill, is because you got so used to just uh, using lay on hands. Touching people on the butt, yeah. yeah. You don't need to know how to, uh, how to do advanced uh, first aid. Um, yeah. Speaking of touching people on the butt, uh, Mark, uh, what did you do with your ability scores? Um, so I might change this up here. I'm thinking about switching my strength and con. If I'm going to tank, I might as well fucking tank. Um, but my strength, I put the 18 in there and then plus one racial on it, so I've got 19. Give me a plus four. I put the 11 into dexterity, so it's just flat zero. I put 15 into con and the um, other racial plus one is there. Um, so it gives me a plus three mod. I got the fourteen in intelligence. Um, so it gives me a plus two. I got wisdom six. So it's a negative two modifier on that, and then a sixteen into charisma with a plus two racial. So I've got plus four. So I've got like persuasion for days. I you know like plus six on persuasion out the out the door, but don't ask me to like see what's going on around me. My perception skill is just flat. Yeah, I mean, you can uh, you can persuade people. You just have no idea what the what their reaction to that persuasion is. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, my insight as well is terrible. <laughs> Insight's horrible. So you don't and know I'm proficient in it. <laughs> For, fortunately, I, I've got proficiencies in all the things I'm terrible at that I oh, need right. to be good at. That'll, uh, yeah. that'll help bump them up, so it's not a critical failure every time you do it. Yeah, yeah. Like the only negatives I've got are medicine and uh, animal handling. Medicine and animal handling. I'm sure animal handling is going to come into into play constantly. Oh no! I right. I'm going to have a mount, aren't I? Oh, I don't know. Are I'm you? A, well, I'm a paladin. Paladins get horses, don't they? Yeah, they get their um fine steed. But the yeah. good thing with that is you just can communicate with telepathically, and it obeys your commands, and it's oh. linked with you, and you are one and all, and all in one with it. So no stress. <laughs> Excellent. We're good then. Um, so, a fizz gun, I was just wondering, uh, how did you get plus one to strength, con, and plus two to charisma? What was that from, racially? Half, half drow. Half drow. Yeah, it's a half yeah. elf. Yeah, half elf. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's that's correct. Yeah, half elf. Um, 
but just you know with just a little bit of drow flavor um yeah. all right cool um who do we have next let's go Remy. what do you got where'd you put your uh stats uh so i put my 17 in no, i put nine into strength uh, I'm a squishy wizard. If I'm using strength, something's gone really wrong. Um, so nine into strength. Uh, dexterity for 13. I went constitution for 14. Um, I went intelligence as a 17. Uh, and then I'm using Tash's uh, cauldron with the racial stats where you can change where your stats exactly go depending on what kind of uh, race you are so i put uh, intelligence up to above that up to a 19 wisdom with a 10 and then i went charisma with my 17 with that final uh, ability score of one into it to make it an 18 so intelligent and charismatic um wizard we've got a charismatic bunch here uh, it's going to be, going to be we good. We do, definitely. <laughs> um, and uh, speaking of charisma, Thrash the Troublesome. There's, there's known far and wide for ability uh, to con people. Uh, let's talk about your racial <laughs> stats. Where'd you, where'd you put your stats? So, of course, I put my beefy 17 into strength, um, giving me a plus three. Um, I put my other 17 into dex, um, I figured as an assassin, you would need to be very sure of your movements, and also it gives me BP initiative, um, so plus four. Um, and then I sort of put my lower stats, my 12, my 11, and my 13, into 12 wisdom, 11 intelligence, and 13 con. Um, and then I, of course, put my 16 into charisma to make me super duper intimidating. Um, so I get a plus three to that. Oh. Good. Uh, so we have uh, we have four characters uh, that are absolutely going to ruin uh, all of my my good good plans. Uh, we have the strong strong one. Got the intelligent one. Uh, we have. Is anyone wise? Uh, was there yep. a, a particularly high wisdom? Nineteen. Yeah, Nineteen wise. on wisdom. wisdom. So we got we got everything covered. Wisdom, intelligence. Uh, what don't we have covered? Um, no, everything. Dexterity. Oh God. Dex, no, uh, Thrash has a high dex. Um, she can Plus four. dance on the head of a needle, uh, as it were. Uh, awesome. Uh, yeah, can't wait to go back through all of my prep and bump up the stats of all of my monsters as well. Uh, yeah. That's fair. <laughs> I think it's only fair, guys. Um, I'm sort of sensing you didn't predict it to go quite as well as it did. <laughs> no. Uh, I had completely different plans for tonight. Uh, I was kind of hoping there would be some tears. Um, but yes. that almost was. <laughs> almost was. <laughs> almost was. <laughs> yeah. That that first uh, set of stats was uh, was something special. Only uh, only that was Toby. Spicy. I, I think I said that earlier on in the campaign. Only you can roll that low and that high um, one after another. Yeah, no I have a special way with dice. No in between. Um, awesome. I think that uh, pretty much. Uh, brings us uh, to the end of tonight's stream, unless anyone else had something they wanted to, to throw out there. Yep. No, we're all, no, all good. Just, um, these guys are just asking about the, the half elf drow stat things and where I'm finding that. I've just linked them the uh, page that I got it from, which is the race that I picked out of the things that we had available to us on Beyond. Yeah, it, uh, um, it came straight out of D&D Beyond, so I'm sure Yeah, it says here, Charisma score it. increased by two, and two other ability scores of my choice increased by one. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. That's, that sounds correct to me, uh, from half-elf uh, stats. From Yeah, cool. Yeah, uh, as, as far as I'm aware. So, yeah, no, it's all good. Um, Sweet. Yeah, um, and, you know, of course, it's, it's easy to check anyway. You're not cheating. I know that. Um, yeah, oh, I'm right. reading the same thing. Yeah, so... Yeah, I um, thought that was the same. Uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, join us uh, for episode one. Uh, it's coming up in uh, two weeks' time on the 18th of March. Uh, episode one of Crit and Misses, Out of the Abyss. You're going to see all these lovely faces and one extra one on the night, uh, that of our... Cody M, uh, Hadrian, who is a mainstay fixture here on Crit and Miss. Um, in the two weeks uh, between now and then, it's going to give you plenty of time uh, to give us uh, a follow here on Twitch. Give us a follow over on um, YouTube, uh, on Facebook, 
um, on all of those things. The only thing I'm not on is Instagram, I believe, just because I can't be bothered. Um, oh, all of this is going all wonky. Uh, where is it? There it is. So I'm just going to chuck those links up in the chat for you guys. So we are on Spotify. You'll be able to find this episode on there uh, the following, this weekend, I should say. Um, hopefully tomorrow I'll get some time to chuck it up on YouTube as well. So if you miss the live stream, um, it's, it'll be up on YouTube as well as all the other previous streams are on there. You can watch um, Toby and Grace uh, in Amongst Shadows and Stone. Um, they do some awesome role playing in that as well. Worth a watch. It was good fun. I watched live for the second one. Uh, of course, we are on Acast, uh, but they got rid of their feed. Uh, so I should probably shouldn't have put that up there. So it doesn't matter. Uh, Ko-Fi, please donate to us on Ko-Fi. Give us three dollars, and uh, we can commission some artwork for our uh, for our characters. Um, of course. You know, follow us on Twitch. We are on Discord as well. Um, if you want to join in the conversation, you can jump on Discord and uh, throw you know suggestions of uh, of what you want to see in streams. Um, I've covered covered pretty much everything. Um, so just before we finish up, guys, I always like to do a little uh, a little closing statement. Um, and I think um, for Out of the Abyss, uh, I'll do tonight's closing statement, and uh, I think I might get the players to do to do some as well uh, for the next few episodes. Does that sound uh, cool with you guys? Yeah, no sounds lame. Sweet. Um, just uh, tonight, uh, before we finish up, uh, I just want to have a quick word about something that affects a lot of people. It's affected me. It's affected people that I know, and that is depression guys it's a uh, it's something that afflicts literally millions of people um, worldwide and it's indiscriminate um, it doesn't matter who you are where you're from you know or how good someone's life may appear on the outside uh, there's a reason why over 700,000 people uh, commit suicide each year um, you know people who suffer from it uh, they get really good at hiding it and uh, reassuring the people around them that they're fine uh, and in, in truth, they're, they're struggling on the inside. So if you or anyone that you know uh, is struggling or, or suffering from depression, uh, this very real and debilitating uh, condition, please get in contact uh, here in Australia with uh, Beyond Blue. I'll just chuck a link for that up in the chat as well for those guys watching on YouTube or listening on Spotify. That is just www beyondblue.org.au that is www.beyondblue.org.au very simple and they have uh, you know a, a bunch of different ways you can get in touch uh, with people that can help uh, even if it's not you if it's someone that you know get in touch with them and uh, they can put you guys on the right path and with that I must say good night and adieu and uh, thanks for joining us. Um, it's been a it's been a blast and I cannot wait to see you all again for uh, for episode one. It's gonna be awesome. Woo! Let's yeah. Woo! Thank you very much guys. Have a hey. good night. Uh, thanks, Ben. Keep in touch on Facebook. Uh, because I'm gonna be posting all the details on there, guys. Good night. Thanks, Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.